Well, this is the Daly River. I thought I'd show you a few video footage rather than uh, tell you about it. So if you ever plan to go up there, you get an idea of what it actually looks like. The footage was taken with an El Cheapo still camera, so it's probably not the best. But as you can see here, as we motor up the river, or should I say down the river towards the mouth, uh, there's a lot of um, steep banks, and you can see on the uh, darker colour at the bottom of the uh, trees, that that's the, uh, the tide line or the high water mark. And there's quite a big variation between high and low water. You see a lot of the banks have collapsed, and it's those trees that lay in the water that seems to attract uh, all the barramundi. As we motor up river here, you'll see uh, it's quite swirly too in the current. And that's uh, all those snags, all those old trees laying on the bottom. And a lot of that is the area where the barra are being caught. And this is our crew, Rick Huckstep, the skipper. Rick was one of the original guides in the Territory. And that's Crockbake, Ron Meddings from Go Anywhere Campers. Uh, Ron builds camper trailers, custom-built ones, good ones too. Now if you have a look at the shoreline here, you can see that there's been old cars up there that the Aboriginals have uh, used and parked, and the banks collapse, and they have end up in the waterway and turn into a good high-water snag. This guy is an absolute nutter. We stayed a fair distance away from him, but he's fishing off the bank. Right in front of him there, there's probably uh, 12 foot of water. And uh, no idea. That's a croc we just gone past there sitting in the water. There's another one on the bank just up the river from him a little way. There's another one. About every 100 metres or so, uh, we saw crocs in varying shapes and sizes. Can't believe that guy was sitting on the bank. This is a fairly big one. We est estimated about three and a half metres. I uh, didn't want to move either. You can see the wash there from the boat up close. No, we were only probably a boat length away from it. In general, they were pretty uh, calm and quiet. They left us alone and we left them alone. Now let's go to the fish. This one's about a 73 centimetre. Have a close look at that lure because that's the one that I got the 106 metre on as well. A Halco Scorpion. Ronnie got a couple of nice ones too. That one's uh, probably about 50 centimetres. We released uh, all of our fish except for a couple, just for a feed. The... This one was uh, about 50 centimetres. You can see there, big fat fish though. Have a look at the uh, height on that, between the bottom and the top. It is uh, very, very healthy. Here's one uh, Rick caught. Uh, it was probably about 72, 73 centimetres. Another good fat fish that was uh, released. Nice silver colour too. Here's a smaller one that uh, was playing around beside the boat, jumping and carrying on. Have a look at the lure that's in its mouth. We were experimenting around with a few different lures, and that was actually a, a uh, Rapala, uh, what we call Qantas, red and white with a metal bib. It's uh, one of my mackerel lures, but the barra liked it. Lots of wildlife up there too, uh, eagles and hawks and all sorts of things. This one was uh, hell-bent on getting us to look the other way, so it flew away from its nest. It had little young ones up there at the time. Another thing we found a lot of is lures, believe it or not. Uh, eagle eye here, we spotted one in the grass, and uh, most of them were well worth salvaging. Have a look at that. We probably pulled three or four uh, uh, just about every day. Okay, leaving the river now, we did a few detours, had a bit of a sh uh, trek around, had a look at a, a few areas. This is a bit of a four-wheel drive trek. Into, we we're looking for a little uh, creek, see if there's any uh, smaller creeks, feeder creeks. That water flowing into the daily was... Uh, was still flowing quite strongly. We thought maybe there'd be uh, somewhere hidden out there where there might be a few barrel. We found li this little creek, the waterfalls, and uh, crystal clear and lots of little fish in it, but I, I, I generally couldn't identify what they were. I don't think they were jungle perch. Now, here's a site you won't see in Queensland. You know you're in the Territory. Have a look at this speed sign. It's right, 130 kilometres an hour. Apparently, they're only reasonably new. We went to uh, Darwin, and uh, this is Minden on the beach. They uh, one of the most famous places to uh, sit and watch the sunset, magnificent sunsets. And they must have known I was coming because the roulettes put on an air display for us. It's quite spectacular. They have markets there in the uh, in the afternoon some days, and uh, yeah, it was quite spectacular. Watch the sun go down, and uh, the markets have a feed and watch this uh, spectacular air show. These guys are amazing. Have a look at this. Just some of the sites that we did besides uh, fishing. And then uh, slowly the sun started to go down and we got these magnificent uh, sunsets. I took a few photos of the uh, of the acrobats of these uh, roulette planes and uh, it was quite spectacular. 
flying in formation as a few boats go over in the sunset. Very tranquil location, I can assure you. And this one where they all peeled off in front of us just as the sun was going down. Uh, magnificent. But then it all got too dark and uh, we uh, packed it up and came back to uh, Brisbane. How's that for a sunset? <laughs>